That's perfect. Hi, I'm Long Beach Post publisher David Summers. This week we're releasing Brian Addison's list of the 25 best restaurants in Long Beach for 2019. As our chief food critic and columnist, it's Brian's list of his favorite places throughout the year where he's dined and tried new dishes. And a lot goes into how he puts that list together. So as we get ready to publish it, Brian sat down with Steve Lowry, the Hilo editor, the arts and culture section of the Long Beach Post, to talk a little bit about how the list works. Some surprises, some favorite dishes, and the first question that Steve asked Brian, what's one restaurant that might surprise people for not making the list this year? Take a look. Uh, probably the one that's going to irk at least the old timers, you know, the, the old guard will be the lack of 555 being on there. Mm. Um, why, why isn't it on the list? It's been a little weird for me to go there lately. I don't know if it's just because they're in this like kind of in between flux. Like one time my steak arrived on like a, an iron, a hot iron yeah. griddle for presentation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you're overcooking my steak. And I got a little offended. They've ditched that. Yeah. But yeah, it's just a little, I think they're in, in between time trying to figure out how an old school steakhouse moves forward. Can it be tough, by the way, can it be tough for a restaurant that is so well known, and 555 is very well known, that it's so easy to rest on what you were that sometimes it's hard to move forward? Really old school places that are like, they deserve a spot on our right. list, but they've just been here forever. We mm -hmm. know they're great, keep going. I kind of feel like that with a 555. Mm -hmm. You know it's great, go. Yeah. Like, it's a fantastic steakhouse, why would you not go? Go. Right. What is not on the list, it killed you, not, you, you can see potential and it's almost there just not it quite like this would be your 26 seabirds okay it's a vegan restaurant um i love what people are doing with vegan food lately um they're upping their game in a way that's really beautiful and i think it converts non-vegans into veganism mm -hmm. while also impressing vegans themselves who are forced to usually get a portobello burger or yeah. be stuck with a side salad and it's sad. It's just, it's been a little inconsistent. So that was my only gripe really. But other than that, that was the one I was like, oh, maybe I should have included it. And I might regret it later. It's, it's been changing this whole month while I've been writing. You know, speaking of that, in January, we'll have something called Vegan Wary, where we're gonna help you become vegan. I became vegan a few weeks ago for the outstanding reason I didn't wanna die. And my cardiologist said, you need to go plant-based. You know what I hate? I wish I could complain. Now it is so easy to go it's vegan. It's beyond easy. It's ridiculous. Disneyland now has plant-based <laughs> <King>. options. <laughs> Everywhere, everywhere yeah. throughout Disneyland, yeah. you can. Some of the dishes they don't even give you the option. It's plant-based nachos. Here you go. It's plant-based ground beef. Enjoy. Yeah, it's it's simple. I wanted to ask you if there was one place, one dish on this list. This was it. This is you know the final meal. Which place, which dish would you uh, would you choose? Um, it would be from Playa More, mm. and it would be his pescado zarandiado. It's mm just a butterfly Chilean sea bass. Yeah. Uh, the zarandeado style is, is famed throughout Mexico, especially Sinaloa. And uh, it's basically, you put the fish over high coals, salt, that's it. Throw it on a plate, you have some salsa. He does like a pico de gallo type thing that he puts on, the, on top as well. And it's just, I don't know, it's almost archaic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's why it's so good, it's yeah. just, simple great food and the, really there's not many accoutrements there's not but he does it so perfectly that it's marvelous i think that would probably be uh, that's one of the dishes i would love to die with yeah. <laughs> um but don't um yeah. <laughs> what uh, I, i'm sure there's going to be a lot of uh restaurants on the list which i actually haven't read yet um that people will recognize what's one restaurant on the list that people would go like what that you're ah. saying like definitely you should check this out uh, I actually dubbed it Pastor Plaza. <laughs> so um, when I was discussing, and Sarah Bennett's going to get a shout out right now, discussing this list with Sarah Bennett, um, I said that I'm including Poncho's Taco Truck because their Al Pastor is marvelous. It's the best I've had outside Jalisco. Mm. And uh, she was like, oh, so you're pitting them against Tacos Leon, which is the other Pastor Taco Truck nearby in this area near West Long Beach at, basically it's Anaheim between Daisy and Magnolia. Yep. And I was like, 
they're not always there all the time. So I haven't had the chance to go yet. Ponchos is always there. And she's like, well, you need to go. So I went, went this past weekend, and it was amazing. <laughs> so I altered it and I'm calling it Pastor Plaza. <laughs> and I kind of Good. want these taco trucks to have like a friendly battle. And hopefully there can be like a third one to really get it going and just create this like Pastor taco truck yeah. frenzy across from the Hawk, which is one of my favorite bars. So oh, yeah. yeah, so Pastor Plaza, I think people are gonna be like, whoa, what? like. It's not even a place, it's where taco trucks park. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> this year, what was the theme for you for Long Beach food? Just massive change. Yeah. Good and bad, good and bad, right? Like it's, I think the coolest part for me right now is that we now have a median quality measure mm. that great food cities have. And we didn't have that before. Because Long Beach, I, Sarah always says like Long Beach is the best at doing mediocre. It only <laughs> only people who have lived here long enough and love the city enough can say that yeah. and not get you know killed for it. <laughs> um, but we've always had a chip on our shoulder and we've always like been so like please come like mm -hmm. open your place here. We're so desperate for goodness. Right. And now I feel like there's just this median quality level that all restaurants know they have to live up to or they're not gonna survive. Could that be part of what you wrote a great piece about this this weird dichotomy where food's probably never been better in Long Beach and yet a lot of restaurants are closing. Is part of that 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 the game is is so up that people are like, I'm not I'm not gonna accept okay anymore. One hundred percent. Yeah. And that's not um a cost of food thing either. Mm. This has nothing to do with this influx of fine dining or or ultra high end options coming in. No, ponchos, the taco truck let's talk about is just incredibly high quality pastor like you're gonna and it's that way across every level yeah I think it's a mixture of both not being able to keep up if it's an older restaurant um, you know like Francelli's I mean it was mm. there for 60 years yeah. and in the beginning it was this kind of like Italian American miracle but now with places like Ellie's or La Parlacha or Michael's even, yeah you know you gotta you better make a damn good pasta or else people are gonna notice mm. uh, the list comes out Wednesday Wednesday. And uh, you're ready for the, uh, the um, I'm ready lovely for the replies for the calls? I'm most, I'm most excited about the hate. Actually, <laughs> no, I really, not the hate per se, but like, I'm excited to see what people think is wrong with the list. Okay. Because that's always the best part. Like, yeah. you know, I think I, I think it's going to be a list that will surprise people in a lot of ways. Because mm -hmm. I include restaurants, not just for their food. Yeah. You know, I talk about one that just, it's about stability. It's a comfort place. Like yeah. it's provided this neighborhood some form of stability in a neighborhood that's changed a bit. So I think the list will be good for a lot of people. When you've come up with things like this, by the way, in the past, do you have a favorite negative comment? Like, you know. Um, yeah, my favorite, and you're going to have to bleep, bleep out. <laughs> Uh, it's Brian Addison, you could have saved time and energy by just writing, I'm <laughs> Will always be my favorite comment of all time. And I took a selfie that actually on a piece of paper I wrote, I'm a, and smiled and I said, thank you for your support. So. <laughs> it's that kind of incisive stuff we like from our post readers. It's out Wednesday, Brian's the one who put it together, so let him know what you think. Happy eating.